Well, so it took a while, but here we are. I have finally got the Griffin, the fifth and final, the secret, the hidden mount of Path of Fire. I wanted to talk to you guys about it today. I have not used this too much, and honestly, this spotlight, I'm going to try and keep nice and tight like the others, but could be extremely long because there's so much jam-packed into the fifth and final mount that make it special beyond the fact that it was just hidden from the player base before uh, the expansion was revealed. So, first of all, there's a huge amount of things you go through in order to acquire the Griffin, which I'm not going to talk about in this specific production, just because there's lots of cool lore, and essentially it's an extension to the main storyline. That means spoilers, that means instances, that means bosses, kind of, and all, all sorts of stuff. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, once you acquire the Griffin, you then do, of course, have Masteries go through, which I've just finally finished. I actually got the Griffin a while ago now, but it's taken me a few days uh, slowly going through getting the experience because Halloween's here and I've been doing a lot of stuff that doesn't give me much experience. But so uh, at long last, just a couple of hours ago, I got this. It took me about three to four weeks after the release of the expansion to get the final mount fully done. And I admit that's quite slow compared to most people. Let's remember some people had this done in what the first day, two days. Um, at last, I, I've uh, managed to explore all of its mechanics. So let's jump straight on in. Uh, here we go. This is the full mount menu now. This is what it looks like uh, with the final griffin up here on top. And I've taken us to Divinity's Reach to show off its capabilities because this is kind of like a cool obstacle course playground area for the griffin, which has such extreme capabilities in terms of its movement. Uh, using it in a, the correct environment really is quite important. And when I say correct environment, generally speaking, I mean quite high up. So let's start off and let's ride it. Now uh, this is what the griffin looks like by default. Ignore the fact that we're on kind of weird wonky terrain. Um, it's a beautiful mount. It's got really incredible stunning animations with its wings. Unlike the other mounts that have got specific areas we acquire them from in terms of like having a heart, this uh, creature does have a sort of associated place in Vabby, but uh, nothing you know along the lines of say the Jackal Fortress that was high up in the sky. And undoubtedly there are a lot of high regions in Path of Fire you can play around with the Griffin. Uh, some of those Jackal portals, in fact, that take you high in the sky, uh, I can think of immediately. So they've got some beautiful idols. I really I really like the way this one sounds, to be honest. Uh, I'm not usually one for cutesy things in the game, but both this and the Springer I've really enjoyed, and I, I can't quite uh, understand why that is true. But th this uh, this Griffin is a lot bigger and actually quite different looking to uh, established Griffin that we've seen in Guild Wars 2 before, which tend to be smaller and obviously we wouldn't actually be riding on. So, um, this is how it looks. There is also uh, the fact that mount skins have just been added to the game as well. So this is the default look. Uh, and what we can do is show off its dyes a little here. So let's go mount dyes. Uh, let's go bloody red here. And already it has got some pretty nice dyes. I think you see a lot of people with blue griffins, honestly. Um, and I've seen some quite beautiful ones as well. They make it look a bit like a, uh, like an exotic uh, tropical parrot type bird. I'm not quite sure how they do that. But we do, of course, how now have skins too. So uh, this is the regular. And this is the Halloween uh, with its default skins, it looks like this, and I guess I'll remove those. Uh, if you do go for this, some people have been talking about, is it worth going for the mount skins? Um, and I kind of agree that really it's not much of a skin, it's just the opportunity to dye these things in lots of different ways. Um, and so, yeah, you can kind of see a little bit of the taste of it here. I guess for this video, we'll show off the, uh, the griffin under its Halloween form, and I'm not quite sure where it's not updating. There we go. So we'll, we'll play on the Halloween Griffin, who I've probably spent more time on than any other version of it, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. Oh, he's got this cool thing around his neck. Right, so what can this bad boy do? Well, a lot of things. This is the one mount in the game that actually has two movement abilities. So let's start very basic. First, we have our combat ability. It's called Swoop. And uh, what Swoop will do, uh, I guess we'll climb back onto those uh, um, rooftops in a second. What Swoop does is from a standing position, we can use it and we'll leap to an area. We'll dismount. Uh, and basically this just does a lot of damage. The other ones um, kind of have CCs and things associated with them. This is just crash into nearby foes. What's kind of cool about this though is it's a lot like the Springer as well in that we can use it in midair. So if I use WSD to walk off the edge here and then I swoop, you will see 
that I can use it here to dive down on the ground and uh, it, the animation cancelled right before I hit the ground there. But we can slam down as well. So that's the combat engage. It's really not that special. 10 targets, lots of damage, inherits the traits from the others. Uh, this mount actually doesn't get a mastery sharing trait for its combat ability, which I'll talk about very soon. But there you go, that's the combat engage. And this is uh, by far the least interesting thing about this uh, creature. So now let's talk about its jump. And for the other mounts, the jump isn't really anything too interesting, right? So uh, when we're on a ja on a rap raptor, sorry, we can jump, and it's just like this. Uh, I pointed out on my Springer spotlight that when you jump on the Springer, it's actually quite high. And so even with a regular jump, you can like clear distances and get up uh, higher places than you'd realize. You don't always have to use their charged one. We did that on the previous spotlight. Uh, well, the Griffin has a very special jump too, and it's this. When I jump. A, we uh, kind of go quite high, but if we hold the button down, you'll notice we can double jump. Now, this is kind of funny to me, because I remember before Path of Fire came out, and the existence of this thing was uh, leaked, uh, many people were talking about a, an extra mount, or a, maybe even a Living World Season 4 mount that would have double jump as its thing. And it's funny because we knew about the Griffin to an extent, uh, but we, uh, all we really knew as a community was this part of it, that it could double jump. And already this is pretty uh, ridiculous. Uh, already this means that much of the Springer's territory for gameplay you can also cover on the Griffin. Especially considering the Griffin can latch onto little bits of rocks and things and then double jump and double jump and double jump again. So that's quite nice. You'll also, no you'll also notice that in addition to this we actually fall quite slowly as well. So if I double jump over here and then I just leave it, uh, we fall very very slowly. Uh, and this has led a lot of people to describe the uh, Griffin as kind of just another version of a glider, just like a strong glider. And um, I think that, that that that's a nice baseline before we get the masteries as a description of the Griffin. And it kind of does mean if you're just a Path of Fire owner, you can essentially do everything gliding characters can as far as the desert's concerned. Now the Griffin cannot take updrafts and the Griffin cannot take ley lines and anything specific to gliding from Heart of Thorns it can't do. But in terms of just being a movement mechanic, it's, it's kind of most of the way there. There's some discrepancies in terms of whether you can get on it in or out of combat. You can glide while in combat, but you can't mount onto the griffin while in combat. But uh, but yeah, so if you combine all this together, uh, you'll notice that we can move along, and every time our endurance bar refills, we can double jump again, so triple jump, and then we can do it again, and quadruple jump, and we can keep going. Uh, and essentially, we are losing a little bit of height as we do this, but only, I believe, about the same amount of height as a glider would, would be losing, or maybe uh, while using lean techniques. The difference here is there is no like endurance cost on this. We can just go forever and ever and ever and ever, and sort of gradually glide our way around. So, uh, some people have described the Griffin as being very slow and moving like a tank on the ground. I can't disagree with that more. This guy moves incredibly quickly. I mean, compared to like the Raptor and all the other crazy movement power creep we've had, it might feel slow, but we're still moving really fast as we run around. We, we can actually move quite precisely, uh, and just the access to that double jump is, is super nice. So there you go, that's the Griffin, that's the baseline Griffin, and in fact, when you're acquiring this mount, um, you can play around with it in this form an awful lot before the Masteries are even introduced. And once the Masteries are introduced, oh boy, do we get a lot more stuff. So let's climb back on top of those uh, roofs and go a bit further with this. So back up here, uh, high up on Divinity's Reach, where once upon a time, by the way, you'd kind of have to bug the game to get to places like this. But now that mounts exist, uh, so many new places have kind of opened up. I kind of want to do a production showing off all the special new areas we can get to. Uh, I'm actually going to fly over here uh, onto this giant glass dome. And um, in fact, we can climb. Should we climb even higher? You can quite comfortably here. This will show off uh, how capably this thing can fly, uh, climb around. Now, we could obviously use the, the Springer if we wanted. Um, to climb all of this, but you'll notice even just uh, with the little double jumping we basically get, the one wing flap, um, you'll notice that we can quite capably move around even higher up on top of the palace. Uh, this was something before I had the Griffin I was messing about deliberately on the Springer with, but now you can kind of uh, get a much greater taste for the freedom that we have. So hopefully I can flap up there. Oh, we missed it ever so slightly. Hold on, so now we're very high up basically, right? And um, I want to show you some of the masteries. Right, so the Griffin Mount. First, we get Soaring Rescue. Uh, this one's pretty basic. You'll notice that we only have three tiers here now. 
Um, on the other ones, we get a fourth, like a droid evasion and so forth, which shares one of them out. There is no sharing here, as I mentioned a second ago. But we do get soaring rescue, uh, and this is that we can now mount the Griffin in mid air. Mid air. While we're in the air, we just use the mount hotkey to hop onto it. So this is really fun. Uh, they they basically explained on the stream that they put this in because they like the idea of the animation. Uh, it reminds me a bit of uh, Valifor swooping in to save Yuna. Oh god, are we stuck in this little hole here? All right, well here I will show you guys um, as we jump off. We're falling, and we could glide, or we can just press the mount key, and so there you go. And so that's why it feels a lot like gliding, because you can save yourself by uh, activating this while you're in midair. The only difference is, if I was in combat right now, I wouldn't be able to get on the griffin, but I would be able to get on a glider. So that's a slight place where sort of gliding uh, wins out just a little bit, okay? So uh, that's the first mastery. Now we have the second mastery, and this uh, adds a lot of new stuff, so a big wall of text we've got here. First, we can use swoop to dive towards the ground and engage foes below us. Or, we can enter the diving state by using ability for our movement ability 1. And when we gain substantial diving speed, we can use movement ability 2 or the backward movement keybinds to carry our momentum upwards. Right, so, uh, first of all I will say for my specific binds of the way I have W, A, S and D working, that little description there of using the backward movement key, that doesn't work for me. But so, uh, you might have noticed in your options, guys, that there is under the mount controls, which are all newly added with Path of Fire. You have movement ability one. Now the movement ability one, I've shown you in all the spotlights on the, on the various mounts, you know, jumping high on the Springer or jumping uh, across a, a great gap on the Raptor or teleporting, right? That's movement ability one. The Griffin is the only one that makes use of this other keybind here, movement ability two, which de by default for me was actually on C. I didn't realize this for a while actually while I was training my Griffin that this stuff had even unlocked for me. So we get a new movement ability. Okay, so we're just going to jump out and we're going to start flying. Okay, all right, so <laughs> we just had a little bit of a cut there. I, there's, there's a lot to wrap my head around with the Griffin. So let's just be clear, right now, what we're doing is not movement ability one or movement ability two. By flapping our wings like this, this is just jumping, okay? This is just a regular jump. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate movement ability one in a second, okay? And this is going to be the same button that would make us teleport, say, on the jackal or whatever. And what that does is that allows us to dive. Now, diving will drop our height massively, but also increase our speed. So here we go. So we're going to dive down. And when I let go, um, I leave the dive. And we can keep flapping our wings. Um, but essentially what's happened there is we're now moving really quickly. Now, while we're in that super fast movement state, which only lasts a certain period of time, you see, I think it's ran out now. What, while we're in that state, if we press the other bind, movement ability two, we can gain a ton of height. So if you're ready, uh, we'll do it. We'll go under this arch here. This is why Divinity's Reach is quite fun. So we're going to dive down with space. We're going to charge forward. And now I'm going to press movement ability two. And we can regain our height. And then we can go along. So there's kind of an idea with the Griffin once you're at this le level with the mastery that you can kind of comfortably glide along like this, just uh, flapping your wings. Or you can, for bursts of speed, choose to go really low and then regain your height. There we ah, see, there we, the, the, you, you're beginning to see immediately how it's uh, kind of tricky to use. Or you can dive down, scrape near the floor, and then regain all your height later. And the difference there is because you're moving so fast, uh, in the long run, it's kind of, you don't lose as much height as you'd expect, right? You can never go higher, or you're not supposed to be able to go higher than you started. There's no, like, weird way of dipping down, getting loads of speed, and then coming back up. That's not a thing. But, uh, I, I, in fact, I think early on I saw a video, somebody suggested you could do it, but the devs were talking about maybe it changed or something. Um, but so, the idea is you can kind of mess about, and here, we'll, I'll show you a little bit more. We'll fly around, we'll go under the arch, and then we'll regain our height there, as you can see, and resume our wing flapping. Now, when I got back to the top of my arc, I'm still around the same height as I was before. So here we'll duck down, and we'll go along. And I mean, this is this is ridiculous. Like, it's so interesting to control, and it's so crazy. The uh, interesting thing that they do at this point as well, I believe it's now, um, is they start to unlock more adventures and things for you as well in the Path of Fire maps that deliberately take place in the air. Now, again, I'm, I'm a novice. I'm a noob with this thing, but uh, so I've not played those just yet. 
But apparently there's some of the more interesting adventures that the uh, the game has offered. And there I pressed the wrong bind and we uh, went collapsing down. So that's just Mastery Level 2. It gets even more complicated and interesting now at Mastery Level 3. So again, we've got three buttons we're dealing with. Wing flapping, diving, and reclaiming our height. Now, technically reclaiming your height, you're supposed to be able to just press back on the keyboard, I think, at your movement ability back. But again, with my specific binds, for whatever reason, that's not quite working. So let's look at the final mastery. And again, this is the final mastery. There's no like sharing capability here. It's called aerial finesse. And what this is, is this. Uh, wing flap can now be used while diving and while pulling up to gain a further burst of speed in your movement direction. So yeah, the wing flap being this, we can actually do this while we dive down or while we pull up. You might think, well, what's so special or interesting about that? I mean, you might have some comprehension for how that affects uh, the gameplay and makes uh, handling this thing that much more nuanced and something you can actually master and be good at. Um, well, it accelerates you even further. So here I'm going to fly, I'm going to dive down, I'm going to flap in the dive down, and you're going to look at the speed I get. All right, so are you ready? So we're going to go. We're going to wait for our endurance to come up. We're going to dive down. We're going to speed. Oh, and then, then I crashed into the floor. Hold on. We'll do that over. We'll do that over. One second, guys. All right, here we go. So take two. We're going to go. Wait for our endurance. We're going to dive down, flap, pull out, and voila. And you'll see here... But now we're moving extremely quick through DR until eventually I decide to pull up. And again, when I do pull up, we're kind of at the same height we were before. Um, and so, yes, it's a very delicate kind of game to handle this uh, correctly. I think Divinity's Reach is a really fun place to, um, to actually practice and test this stuff out. Uh, needless to say, hopefully I've given you a good demonstration here of just what makes the Griffin so ridiculous and so fun to practice as well. Um, I obviously recommend anybody, if you've got Path of Fire, if you've beaten the story, if you've got the other mounts, to seriously consider picking this thing up. Because, uh, I mean, I I'd seen a lot of videos of it before I was able to play it, but now that I have played it, uh, I'm truly, truly, truly impressed. So... Uh, I'll probably come back with more talk about this very soon. I want to keep this video a little bit tight. So uh, I'll leave it there. Give me any tips you guys have or interesting places that we can visit in the game uh, to mess around with this. And uh, yeah, you guys will see Fallout Productions of the adventures and also the acquisition, which has a lot of interesting lore and fun stuff going on there. So thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little series on the mounts. As the devs add more mounts, I'll do more spotlights on them. And I guess, uh, I hope, at least, to see you all very, very shortly. So uh, we'll leave it out with Verdant Brink here, which was, uh, I think, the first video I saw of this mount in action. So we'll dive down. We'll accelerate the dive down with a wing flap. We'll come out. And uh, if you're very good with this, basically, you can uh, kind of just fly your way through the entire map, ducking down and uh, rising up as you see fit, which is uh, pretty goddamn cool, in my opinion. So thanks very much, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's brilliant.